guys welcome back to my channel this is my first video of 2022 not by choice but by many errors i filmed about two or three videos and they were just a whole mess whether one one was done without sound and then one i forgot to press the record button so just a whole lot of hiccups but nonetheless we're here today and if you notice i'm actually in an office office where i have a board i can actually write on but today what we're going to do is i'm actually going to show you or demonstrate a dbt worksheet that you can actually do with your clients um and as we know dbt is great for helping your clients to address faulty thinking or just restructuring their thoughts so that they can start implementing new coping skills new way of doing things to get away from negative patterns of behaviors um so cbt is awesome for that now one of the things is that cbt is not always is not the one and done intervention you have dbt person center um solution focus a lot of other interventions that are geared towards different behaviors or different issues going on so for today what i will be using this is the worksheet that i have used over the years with my clients and this is from the cincinnati university b um program that they had years ago I'm not sure if that program is still available but i first got hold of this through probation when i was a juvenile probation officer and we had to complete that whole training and this was the worksheet and i absolutely absolutely love it so i will try to link this as down below but i've seen a lot of other worksheets that you can actually use that are very similar to this and they do the same thing so if you can't get a hold of this one and if i can't find this to link it i will try to find something similar uh for you guys to be able to print it so this is i'm going to try to recreate this on the board so let me bring that a little closer so you can get a close-up shot of that okay so for the behavior chain a behavior chain helps you with your clients to address a particular situation that caused them to to do or to to exhibit a negative a negative action so let's go ahead and write that up here let me make sure i get this good and i hope you guys can see that clearly okay so you have the situation gonna draw that box down here you have the thoughts I'm just gonna draw a little stick man right here <laughs> I'm gonna draw a little heart right here I'm just gonna draw a little brain right here because the thinking box goes to the brain right we don't think with our heart right over here we're gonna have the feelings box. And this is gonna go to the heart, okay? We're just gonna bring it right here, tap. And then under here, we're gonna have the action, which is what you actually do. And then over here, we're gonna have the consequence. And we're gonna put a plus up here for the positive consequences. And we're going to put a negative down here for the negative consequences. Okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a basic situation. And then we're going to fill this chart out and see how we could get our clients to think differently. Or to figure out how the situation impacted their thoughts and feelings. And then hence causing them to do something. When you're using the behavior chain as well, one of the big things about the behavior chain is that you are trying to get your clients to recognize how their feel, how their thoughts and their feelings influence what they did because of a situation. They didn't think it through thoroughly. They went on the thoughts and feelings and they just automatically did something. One of the big things I also want to point out too is that in life we are generally creatures who we 
think something within a millisecond, we feel something, and then we do something. Or we don't put the amount of time in to assess our thoughts, analyze our feelings, and then make a decision. We feel something, we think something, and then we react. So for example, you go to work, and you say good morning to your coworker, and your coworker did not answer you. You automatically start thinking, she's mad at you, right? What did I do to her? She's mad at me. And then you, from that one thought, oh, she didn't answer. Oh, she's mad at me. You start feeling upset. You're feeling disrespected. And then your action from that can be now you, you're being short. When she does come to say something to you, you're being short with her. You're not responding or you're ignoring her. Because that one situation of you saying good morning and they did not answer automatically triggered you. So we're going to put that first example on the board just to see a little situation. All right. So you say good morning. And co-worker. Did not. Answer. Okay. So that's the situation. Your thoughts immediately. Oh, wow. Is that you start thinking. She is mad. At me. What did I do? To her or him, whoever it is. Right. That's what you start thinking. Right. And then over here immediately. Let me grab my feeling sheet because that's one of the big things I'm, I'm, I love to do is I love to have my feeling sheets so that I can actually look at words that are actually feeling words. And this is my feelings chart, guys. I have the ones with the emoji and then I have ones with words. And this is perfect to have in your sessions because your clients will often say, I'm good. Good is not a feeling. All right, or I'm okay. Okay is not a feeling. You want to start getting your clients in the habits of expressing themselves, finding the right words, the right feelings to assess that. So I'll always have my feelings chart in, in the session and I'll give it to them. Here you go. Look at it and tell me what, what feelings do you have right now. Okay, so... From your client saying, you're, you said good morning to your coworker. Hey, good morning, Sherry. She didn't answer you, All right? So you immediately start thinking, she's mad at me, or what did I do to her, or what did I do to him? You start feeling over here. You probably start feeling mad. I'm going to put mad here. That might be a little excessive, but you start feeling mad. Or you may be feeling scared. What else? Um, confuse. You may be feeling confused. And guys, look at the confused emoji right here. <laughs> look at that emoji. So from just this, these thoughts and these feelings, you may now rush to being snappy with the person, right? Or you may ignore the person when they come to speak to you. Right? So this is what you end up doing. Being snappy or ignore the person. Right? And then, of course, there may be some consequences. Some consequences may be you guys may get into an argument. Right? You may get into an argument, exchange words, not so kind words, etc. What could be a positive consequence if there's any? I don't see any positive consequence coming from this situation. So, um, what with if you have a client who said 
this is what the situation was. I end up getting, or you may get written up because you guys got into that argument. So let's put that there too. So you have your client draft this out on their sheet. Now, what you would want them to do is look at this and see how there was a chain of behavior. Chain and what the behavior chain is doing is it's looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, six different things that occurred because of this one situation or five different things. One, one, two, three, four, five, five different things that occurred just because you said good morning, right? Your clients are not thinking about the thoughts and the feelings or they're not thinking about much. They're just thinking about this, the situation. I told her good morning. I ain't have no problems with her. I told her good morning and she didn't answer, right? So you automatically jump to start doing this without first step, taking a step back. So what behavior chain wants you to do now is to recognize a situation, but instead of addressing the faulty thinking, because this is faulty thinking, this right here is faulty thinking. I'm going to put that there. This is faulty thinking. You automatically thinking someone is mad at you because they did not answer you. It may be some other deeper issues that are going on down inside. So this is faulty thinking. This is faulty feelings. Right? They're faulty. There's no substance to them. Right? No substance. No substance. And I know the writing maybe is because of the angle. There's no substance. She did not respond. She might have been busy. And we'll look at that. But it's faulty thinking. And this is what you want to bring your, 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 your client's attention to with a behavior chain worksheet. Is that faulty thinking? Why did you start thinking that that person is mad at you? Why did you start questioning if you did something to this person? So what you want to do is after you've had your client recognize this, you want to go back through now and have them do this exercise over thinking in a positive way, right? They are oh, rubbing out the wrong things. So thinking in a more positive positive way so let's write this one back this is supposed to be the feelings okay so situation you said good morning to your co-worker now you've brought the faulty thinking to your client's attention now you want to address that with them okay let's look at the situation again and let's think about something a positive thought or a more concerning thought that you could have instead of a faulty thinking what could you replace that she's mad at me thought with it could be i wonder if she is okay. Now you're taking that faulty thinking away from yourself because what we're doing what in CBT or with a behavior chain exercise, the person is usually thinking about themselves, what someone else did to them. In this particular situation, we saw where we're, the person is thinking that this person is mad at them. Me, you're mad at me. What did I do to you? So now when you're doing the positive aspect, you're having your client think about the other person. I wonder if she's okay, right? That could be a thought. Two is she is not usually like that. Bingo. So now you're starting to think you're starting to think about the person. What's another thought that you could be thinking about? We we'll think about that. I can't think of one right now. So now we could go to the feelings chart. And instead of feeling mad, 
mad and upset like you were the first time, now you could be feeling concerned. You could be feeling concerned for your for the for the person. What's another one? <clears throat> Um, you could be feeling uneasy because you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to put that one right there. Um, those are the only ones that's on this sheet that I have. I could, I, I'm going to put that you could be feeling curious. So now those are different, right? First, you're feeling scared, you're feeling anxious, you're all them stuff. And then a better action from this could be to go and talk to the person and ask if she's okay. So now your actions is a, a little better, right? So now you go and you go, hey, and I noticed when I came in this morning, I said good morning and you did not answer. That's usually unlike you to not answer. Is everything okay? Bingo. Positive consequence now is Anne tells you her dog died last night. Or her cat. Or she got some bad news. And it's making her sad. So now you have gotten a better a better outcome. Because now you found out Anne is not Anne is feeling a little down this morning because she had some bad news or her dog died or her aunt or cat died. So now you can better address and not think that everything, there's no faulty thinking. Which is the main purpose, is to fix those faulty thinking, bring those faulty thinking to your client, or allow your client to start replacing those negative coping skills of automatically assuming that people are out to get them. Somebody, you don't like me, she's mad at me. Now, they're starting to take it away from themselves and start thinking about others. So this is a great, great way for you to use the behavior chain. So I did that that example. Now let's use an example, another example. So then I'm gonna give you about three examples. I don't want this video to be super long, but what we'll do is I'll give you another example so that you can see the versatility of a behavior chain. Okay, so I keep rubbing out the feelings. <laughs> okay, so for this one, I'm going to use the black pen this time. Okay, so for this example, okay, so for this example, what we're going to do is we're going to say you're running late for work. You wake, you wake late. You woke up late. You wake late, woke up late. We'll put that right English dream. So you woke up late for work. What are some thoughts? And guys, this this scenario may have a little bit of potty mouth, right? Because with your clients, you want your clients to be transparent and you want your clients to be able to freely express themselves, how they were feeling. Sometimes our thoughts or what we're feeling or, or, or go, our thoughts aren't so pleasant, right? Don't ever restrict your, your sessions to, oh, you, you can't say certain things. You want it as comfortable as possible and as transparent as possible. So you woke up late. For work and the first thing <laughs> the first thought that may come to your mind is oh shit 
right? I've gotten that a lot. Oh, shit. You jump out that bed. You start, <laughs> you start blaming the phone, the alarm. Darn it. Damn it, phone. You need an alarm, right? I'm going to put that right there. Damn, phone. Because now we're blaming everybody except ourselves, right? Three. Only had I gone to bed lately, um, earlier. All right. Number four could be, I can't be late. I've I've, I've been written up this two times this month. I will be written up. Five. I could lose my job. I could lose my job. Six, and the list goes on. Um, it could be, damn, I've already been written up two times this month. I can't afford a third written up. I may not get paid. I may get demo demoted. All the stuff. Now let's move on to the feelings. So as you're rushing and you're in the bathroom and you you taking a one minute shower, you rushing. You may be feeling anxious, right? You may be feeling anxious. You may be feeling scared. You feeling mad at yourself. What's another feeling? Let's see. You may be able to get a little bit more feeling. You may be feeling disappointed. What else? We already have mad. We'll leave it for that at the feelings. Okay. Now let's look at the action. What do you end up doing? You, let's say you end up speeding. Speeding to work. Because this is an action, something you did. This is the situation you woke up late. These are the thoughts. This is what you're feeling. Now you're speeding. You driving down 95, mad as hell, scared and anxious. You honking everybody. You now have road rage, right? Let's look at a positive consequence. Positive consequence may be you don't get fired. Right? What is positive from you speeding? Let's look at a negative consequence. You may get pulled by the police. Whoop, whoop. You get pulled by the police. Now you're more late. <laughs> the first thing was late. Now you're more late because the police is taking their time to write that ticket. Now you have a ticket. Right? And then the list could go on. You could get written up at work. All of the nine yards, right? So, situation, you woke up late. Thoughts. The feelings, what you end up doing, and the positive and the negative consequences from what you did. Okay? Now, you would do this again similar like the previous one, which would be to now that your clients are aware of what they did or how they addressed it with the faulty thinking, right? Because <clears throat> in the faulty thinking right here is like, all these thoughts and all these feelings and all the stuff you're doing, it's faulty because you're not blaming yourself, right? So, now you could go back and you could do, you could change that. And what, what you could do is, you know, just think about some other things, feel something different, and the change the action. The action could be you telephone and tell your supervisor that you overslept and that you will be in as soon as possible and you take your time and you drive to work and you get there safe you still late but you get there without a ticket without being pulled by the police so yes guys let me know what your thoughts are as it relates to the behavior chain absolutely one of my favorite 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 activities to do to address faulty thinking um thinking just negative patterns of behavior if we do this a lot and listen there's just some things that 
of, have become a pattern of behaviors for us that we may not be conscious conscious of. And so doing this activity is great to pinpoint some of those um, patterns of behaviors that have become norms for us and to start restructuring our thoughts. So one of the things with CBT is CBT is all about tilting the scale. I don't think I can draw a scale, but you would have something like that, right? You have one scale. I don't know what this is, guys. And you have another scale over here. And the, the aim is to tilt the scale to the, the pro part, right? To tilt the scale over here by changing some of those cons, changing some of those faulty thinking, faulty thinking, negative behavior, right? All those things to where the scale tips to where you want to change. So I will link as much as I can down in the description box. And I will also be linking anything else that's also relevant. So thank you guys for tuning into this video. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.